Today, we're gonna to be working on a faulty Sega 32X. Most of you will be familiar with the 32X, but in case you're not, it's essentially an accessory that expands the capabilities of your Model 1 or Model 2 Genesis to 32-bit. It was a pretty powerful add-on in that sense, but uh, not a lot of good games were made for it. There definitely are a few fan favorites, but in general, it just didn't sell very well. And um, it certainly didn't help that the launch of the Sega Saturn was right around the corner. So that pretty much sealed the fate of the 32X. This particular unit was donated by Silifu. Thank you very much. And um, according to him, he's never been able to really get it to work. He picked it up from Goodwill many, many years ago, back when they actually used to have things like this. And uh, it always just displayed garbage on the screen. So. He ended up picking up another one for himself. He's held on to this one for all these years. Now it's here for us to tinker with and see if we can get it to work. Quick glance at the cartridge port and uh, nothing really jumps out. All those pins look like they're all right. Nothing particularly loose with the connectors back here. Overall, I'd say the unit's in pretty decent shape. The standalone system arrived as is without any additional accessories, so I picked up a few extra things for it. Here we have a tested working copy of Virtua Fighter for the 32X and the patch cable. There's an article on Retro RGB that mentions the dangers of using poorly made patch cables for the 32X. And uh, what you wanna pay attention to when you're picking up one of these is that the five volt pin is absent. And as you can see, it's been removed on both ends of this connector. Let's go ahead and start hooking the sky up. For power, both the Genesis Model 2 and the 32X officially run on 10 volts center positive. I'm gonna be using one official MK2103 power adapter, otherwise known as the yellow tip power adapter. I only have one of these power adapters, so I'm plugging the official one straight into the 32X. And for the Genesis, I'm gonna power it using my bench power supply, using this connector that I've salvaged, which has the right plug. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my bench power supply here. That's gonna be the fan noise that you hear in the background. Now let's hit record and turn this guy on. Nothing. Okay, um, let me just try a regular Genesis game. Same thing, it's completely dead. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing apart. I don't even know if it's turning on. There's no LED on the front face here, so there's no indication that it has any signs of life. Um, I think we'll just get a better sense of what's going on once we take a look inside. We'll start by removing a spacer over here. Looks like we have four screws on the back. All right, I'm guessing the top cover, yep, just comes right off. I don't see any missing screws, which is good. Let's go ahead and remove this shield. All right. We have a spacer over here, just set that aside. All right, let's uh, take a closer look at the board. I'm gonna leave these uh, connected for now because I'm gonna do some voltage checks and I wanna be able to plug it in. But uh, if we have to separate them a little bit later, um, we'll go ahead and do that. Overall, the board actually looks like it's in pretty decent shape. I don't think it's been taken apart, but if it has, it's been carefully put back together. Let's take a closer look at these ports on the underside of the board here. Nothing really jumps out here either but um, I'm gonna start by just focusing on the area where the connectors are. This is our power connector here, and uh, I can almost see what looks like a little fracture on the top of this pin here. Hmm. Yeah, my, my tool actually kind of like catches on the lip there. Well, if this is a power connector issue, that's gonna make a pretty sweet repair. Let's see if we have 10 volts. We don't. And what about when I touch the center of this pin? This connector is totally busted. I think we just have a case of a dodgy connector. Now, uh, I'm not plugging this into test, but uh, this connector here is just a passive component. I should be able to measure 10 volts across those pins. And uh, no matter how I wiggle, that uh, plug, I'm not getting any voltage at all. This guy uses a Model 2 style connector and I have a bunch of those in stock, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab one and uh, we'll swap it out. 
let me show you guys the backlog. I have the whole second floor of the house to myself. And uh, this is where I keep the backlog, controllers, parts, things like that. There's Old Glory outside, snowing a little bit. Beautiful day. How many consoles is too many, really? That's a rhetorical question, of course. This is my little Sega bin. And I know I have some power connectors in here somewhere. Yep, Genesis Model 2 style connectors. I'm all set up here. Let's go ahead and swap out this port. Most of the old solder is out. I'm gonna go back in with some chip quick and then use a little bit of hot air to remove the port. I have the jaws of the forceps here locked onto the port and uh, I'm going in at 400 Celsius fan speed five. All right, she's breaking free and out she comes. Very clean extraction and no ripped pads. Let's go back in with a little bit of wick and clean up those holes. Let's go ahead and pop this connector in here. And uh, let's go ahead and solder this guy in place. Let's take a closer look here. Nice little solder blobs and those guys are anchored in there really good. I've got the system all hooked up here. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test. Hit record and turn it on. It's working. Uh, it's not loading the game though. I'm gonna try just a regular Genesis cart. Just the black screen. Well, it's definitely more alive than it was before. I can see the, uh, the license text, but then the game just doesn't load after that. Okay. That's definitely promising. Whatever the issue was with the power connector, that seems to be resolved. And uh, we're actually seeing an image on the screen, but uh, it's not loading games. So um, I'm hopeful it's just a dirty cartridge port or maybe something to do with these connectors. I'm gonna give everything a good cleaning with some contact cleaner, try it again and see what we get. Well, there's definitely quite a bit of uh, grime on that connector. So hopefully that has something to do with our issue. All right, round two, let's try this again. Record and turn on. License screen, black screen. Process of elimination here. I'm gonna try a different uh, Genesis just to rule out that it might be something particular to this unit. I don't know why that would be the case. Let's grab this guy right here. All right, let's see what we got. Black screen. The last thing I'm gonna to try tonight is to give these ribbon cables a little trim. Now, if you look very closely, you can see indentations where the pins in the connector meet the pads on the ribbon cable. So if we trim off just a hair from the bottom of this ribbon cable, the pins in the connector are gonna be forced to make new indentations right above where these ones are. I've gone ahead and installed a new razor blade so I can get as clean of a cut as possible. This is what my trim down connector looks like compared to the original. And I gave both corners a little bevel so it doesn't delaminate when I try and insert it into the connector. Let's go ahead and get those ribbon cables back on there. 
Those ribbon connectors are firmly seated in those sockets. Let's uh, hook this guy up and give it another test. Place your bets, fellas. Is it gonna go past the license screen here or not? Come on, baby. License screen? Nothing. Just the black screen. Damn it. I'd like to start taking some voltage readings around the board. Now, uh, we've resolved the issue with the connector, so the board is receiving power, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the board is properly energized. So uh, while I have it plugged in here, let's just go ahead and take a few voltage readings on this top side of the board. Let's turn this thing on. Let's check our input voltage here. About 12 and a half. That's actually totally fine with an OEM power supply. The range can vary quite a bit, and uh, usually that goes down a little bit when the power supply is under load. Now this red wire right here is probably five volts, and I can actually see VCC right there on the silk screen. So let's see if we have five volts on this wire right here. We do have five volts. Now we have a couple of Sega chips here and here. 315-5788. This chip right here is a video chip and uh, we should be getting five volts on pin one and uh, we're getting five volts. All right, what about this chip right here? 315-5684. It looks like this is a sound chip and we should be getting VCC on pin 32. 32 is this pin right here and we're getting five volts. It's time to uh, take apart the bottom half of the 32X. So this is the bottom half of our unit here. Let's look at the other side, Let's see if anything jumps out here. I'm gonna have to stop the camera and uh, come back when I have a meaningful avenue to investigate. At this point, I'm just clocking up empty footage. So uh, I'll be back. It's late at night, my wife's gone to sleep. I'm still thinking about this damn thing. And uh, I think I might've found a little bit of trace rot here. I'm not sure what else to call it. Now, if we do a continuity check, if we start with this pin right here, it's good. Let's move one over. It's good. We get to this one, nothing. And if we move down here, it's good. But along this path, we just lose continuity. Next trace, good. Come back to this one and it's dead. So we need to bridge these two little points right here. Let's start with a little bit of flux. We're gonna go ahead and tin the trace. All I really have to uh, bite onto is this little sliver right here and it's just not enough. That V is gone. We're gonna have to do it to the other side. Now we need to figure out which of these pins that uh, V is supposed to go to. So I'm gonna try and uh, touch whatever's left of it here. And let's see which pin it is. It's pin eight. I'm gonna be using 32 gauge enameled wire for this. And I've gone ahead and switched over to the chisel tip. All right, a little bit of flux on pin eight. See if we can get a little solder blob on there. All right, that's definitely on there. All right, other side now. A little bit of flux. Now, if that worked, we should have continuity to the other side of the board on pin three. Here's good. All right, that's touching pin three and pin eight. 
and we have continuity. All right, guys, it's all uh, back together. There's our repair. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. We're all plugged in here. It has to work. Record. Come on, baby. Come on. Sound. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. Oh man. All right. All right. I have no words, guys. I have no words. Wow. Wow. Damn, that's cool. Oh. What a great way to end the night. It's the following day and uh, I'm just thrilled with last night's outcome. I just finished washing the top case and while that's drying off, let's go ahead and button this guy up. I'm gonna be trying this UV solder mask that I recently picked up. Up until now, I've just been using nail polish as an overcoat and that's been working incredibly well, but uh, I'm gonna give this stuff a shot and see how I like it. We'll just clean this area up with a few drops of IPA. Let's get some of this stuff on here. We'll do one side of the board at a time. Let's get the UV light on there. We'll give that a couple of minutes to fully cure. It's been about five minutes or so, and uh, oh yeah, that is definitely hard to the touch. The connector side I'm gonna do off camera. I don't wanna push my luck with these ribbon cables and bend them back and forth more than I have already. And quick glance for the camera. That's what it's looking like on the connector side. Case is nice and clean. Let's go ahead and start putting this thing back together. We have the bottom half of the console reassembled, including the cartridge spacer, and I'm just gonna slide the console right in. Top shield. And finally, the top case. Dries with a matte finish and looks fantastic. Time for the final test. Let's do this. Alrighty, fellas, let's power this guy up. Record and turn it on. That was a tough project, not gonna lie. The repair was actually quite simple, finding it. Uh, that, uh, that was another story altogether. I've actually never played this game. I've heard Virtual Fighter 2 is actually really good. Um, but uh, let's see if any of my Street Fighter moves will work on uh, this guy. Okay. That's so funny. This must have been so, <laughs> this must have been so groundbreaking back in the day. Man, that is uh, definitely one of my favorite projects so far. The repair was actually quite simple. Finding it was very challenging, and um, strangely, it's more rewarding than some of the much more complex uh, projects that I've worked on. I spent a lot of time off camera hunting down the issue. I did no less than 100 continuity checks. I took out my oscilloscope, which I'm still teaching myself how to use, and I was looking at clock signals and data lines and address lines and um, so many dead ends. When uh, there you have it, I mean, a broken trace right by the cartridge slot under my nose the whole time. So uh, moral of this repair, don't give up, keep at it. You'll eventually figure out what the uh, problem is. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I will see you guys again soon. Take care.